the Lowrance HDS9 uh, live. Looks super good. I can't wait to see what it looks like on the water. So yeah, this just arrived. This is with the uh, Active Imaging 3-in-1 transducer. Uh, it's the 9 display. And there's all the various bits and goodies. Just have a look at the back of the box. Yeah, it just shows you all the various features. GPS, NEMA 2000, multi-touch, active imaging, wireless chirp. Engine interfacing, I will be interfacing this with the vessel view link from Mercury. So yeah, let's have a look inside. Okay, so first off, some Lorentz, uh, some Lorentz decals. Two of them. Quite large, actually. Pretty cool. I don't think that's standard. This is a South African unit, but yeah, who knows. And this is the unit itself. Nicely packaged. Quite secure. Lorance on the screen cover, HTS in the middle. It's also got plastic on the top to protect it. The screen cover was quite tight, so I just loosened it a bit. Yeah, that looks so sick. Okay, let's get this back on. Okay, next in the box, all the various manuals. Transducer, manual, it's a mounting template if you want to flush mount it. Operator's manual, man this thing is thick. <laughs> man it's a welcome aboard card. Okay if you lift this up, wow there's a lot of stuff in there. One transducer, pretty sturdy cable plug. Yeah, not. I wouldn't really say this transducer is much bigger than the total scan. I'm not going to take it out of the packaging right now. Do that a bit later. Yeah, power cable, mounting bracket, all the various plugs, mounting knobs, fuse. Another Lorance decal. And cable ties, mounting hardware for the transducer bracket. And then switching uh, from the total scan with the plastic to the metal on the on the three and one. Lots of mounting holes as well. The so swing bracket there as well. Yeah, then the mounting bracket. This is plastic. I didn't have an HDS before this, but I believe the previous ones were metal. Little channel for your wiring. And then a gasket to seat it for the flush mount type installation. So yeah, man, that is a lot of stuff in one box. That's all of it. Uh, I'm so, on yeah. the water with uh, the Lorenz HDS 9 Live after installing it. It was fairly painless. Um, just finished off the wiring, yeah, just with some split tubing. And I've been messing around with the unit as well. As you can see, I got a custom background on it. Uh, I do have a matte uh, anti glare screen cover on it, so it's got a couple of bubbles on it. It still needs to wear out. But yeah, it does not affect the detail at all. So I got this hooked up to a Mercury 150 4-stroke Pro XS via the NEMA 2000 network, as you can see the Mercury icon right there. And it's really great. I mean, it gives you all the detail you want. We got a fuel tank. The needles on the RPM as well as the speed are really responsive. The detail is also quite significant. It gives you various, um, various engine indications. 
Uh, if you open the tab here on the side, it still shows you pretty much everything there with the addition of uh, maintenance. The engine has four hours, 45 minutes on it. Maintenance life and so on. Also has the vessel control. I don't know if the engine switched on now. I'll do so in a second. So that's the engine switched on. It just takes a moment just to communicate. Gives the communication error. Uh, but once it picks it up, it'll show you everything you want to know. Let's just wait for that to happen. And then also you have your trim indicator over here. Uh, which is your trim bar it's quite responsive also when the engine is in forward gear it only limits you to 38 percent of a uh, trim so it does not have a bolt-in trim it just limits the um the um the range you have as you can see there it came on every now and again it'll run through a series of tests and it'll show what tests it's doing and then after it's done it will say system okay and once you press there on the Mercury icon, it gives you all the various um, detail. If I put the engine into gear, uh, as you can see, it shows 35% trim. As soon as you start giving uh, power, it'll actually limit it to only 38%. But okay, enough of that. The unit's very responsive. I got two SD cards in it. Uh, on the charts, I am on the Gamtus River in the Eastern Cape. I actually do have the chart on you. Just need to select it. There we go. So it shows you your trails as well as uh, the depth. And then I got my custom uh, overlays on the side. I got speed on ground, water temp, date, fuel in liters, trim percentage, uh, RPM and battery. I'm not gonna go through all of these various things. I mean, it's all just additional features. If you swipe right, it shows you the full map. Let's go to Sonar. I got this on medium chip in channel two. I use a pallet, I'm not even sure what the pallet is called. I use pallet number two, just because of the definition of detail that it gives you. I prefer it. I'm not running a split. I'm not running the downscan overlay either. And I got fish ID off. Got my range on auto two meters. I mean, this river I'm fishing in is really nothing more than seven meters. Average is about four or five meters. So I'll leave it at, oh, it goes to three now. Just as long as it's an auto. And also I use this in general mode. And if you swipe away, off it goes. Also with the um, overlays, fairly, fairly, fairly similar. I try and keep it standardized on all my different displays with the amount of detail that I get or sorry with the indications relevant to me. So this is a tidal river, um, an estuary so I mean there's a there's a really there's a lot of stream that goes through this river so the bottom and the structure actually changes all the time so as you can see a flat bottom the detail is really really good. Um, this is on the 800 hertz i prefer getting more detail because i don't really need massive amounts of range but yeah that's um that's the uh, side scan for you something coming up over there i'm coming up to about let's say 20 to 30 meters from the side so i'm going to go a little bit closer and see what it does um, see if it changes the bottom at all I don't suspect it to as there's quite a quite a big drop off on the shore all the way down the river it's just a lot of sticks and stuff that float around so as you can see it's still sitting at a solid two meters probably about 15 meters from the side now that's one five meters it's even getting deeper and it'll keep this depth until f quite close to the shore as you can see still no change in the um in the display it's sort of just deciding what it wants to do range wise still two meters i'm probably 
five meters from the shore and only there it's getting shallower now anyway carrying on let's go to the down scan probably the one i use the most uh detail on this is really good i have it on f uh, five meters auto a little bit of fish reveal coming through there i got the fish reveal overlay as well and i got all my settings on high um yeah that's about it really useful as you can see look at that's very very steep drop off let's say it's about 14 meters from the shore it goes from about zero to two meters all of a sudden so yeah this is the one i use the most and uh, then i've spoken about the engine display see i got this connected up to my phone as well gives you all the phone um, messages and calls and all of that uh, but i gotta say if you got a mercury engine this is by far the best feature uh, to go with it is so useful and this is hooked up to the vessel view link module uh, this boat has no gauges at all this is all i'm running uh, for my um, for my sounder and engine display so yeah i'm really impressed with the unit um, i would definitely recommend it I would say anything smaller than a nine might be small for an engine display and something else um, but yeah really happy with it